Hello, hello, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Javon Henry and today I just thought that we'd take some time and we'd chat. We're coming up on my third year, fourth year anniversary actually of becoming a full-time voice actor and um, yeah, I thought that we'd just go over some of the big things, some of the big differences that I learned from getting started to where I am now in case anybody else out there is looking to become a full-time voice actor. So let's hop right into this. Number one, the biggest thing that I learned is that this is an industry that is based on relationship. This is an industry that is based on building your name within the community in order to actually help you get work as well. So here's a great example of this. You can start out by doing your own free work. So you can start out by making scripts, writing scripts, recording them, and then releasing them online. You can sign up for a million free platforms and then eventually people are going to start to trickle down and come to you, right? You have your Fiverr, your Voices, your Voice123, your Voice Bunny. You have a bunch of these online pay-to-play and free-to-play websites. The issue being that unless you build a relationship in, one sh in some way, shape, or form, you're going to end up without any of these clients at the end of the day. So for example, if you hate AI as a voice actor, you you stand against it, you can't stand it, and you have basically stationed yourself where you're not working with the company that utilizes AI. Voices just released their AI uh, studio beta platform in which a client can come and they can pay for an AI voice actor, essentially. If you do a lot of your work through voices and you don't have an actual relationship with any of the people, then your business with voices is in jeopardy. If you say, well, I don't want to be with voices anymore because I don't want to support that. Well, you don't have any clients on your own, right? You get them all through voices. So it's a double-edged blade there. You need to have the relationship building in order to start meeting your actual clients. Have the relationship building in order to start meeting your actual peers, right? Meeting casting directors, meeting other actors who you might want to cast in something. If you think that they're absolutely phenomenal, you might want to cast them in something. So actually meeting with them, whether that be going to conferences, whether that be doing online courses, whether that be just doing classes, whether that be just attending seminars, just meeting and talking with as many people in this field as you can, because they will be your creative sphere, whether that be of casting directors, whether that be of business owners, whether that be of other voice actors, just meet and chat with people. Number two, equipment is not the end all be all. More important than equipment is your approach. So this can really be split up into two things. Let's start with equipment. Number one, you really only need two good microphones, right? One microphone in case the other's down. You can get three in case one accentuates your voice in a slightly different way. I use the TLM 103, that's great for animation because it's nice and bright and it helps to um, bring out the presence in my voice, especially when I'm doing my younger characters, which I do quite often. But then, when I'm doing more commercial work or stuff that requires a lower presence, I usually switch to my TF50, which is a tube microphone, which has a nice warmer saturation and it helps to bring out the lower tones in my voice. And this allows me to reach that full range depending on the copy. You really only need one microphone when you're getting started. You're good, you're good, I, I promise you. And two to three, depending on if you go down the route of wanting different microphones that accomplish different things, different tools for different jobs. That's number one. Your actual audio interface now. You're gonna hear a lot of people talk about Newman microphones, whether that be the TLM 103 or the UA87. Those are gonna be the two that you hear tossed around all the time. You're also gonna hear about the Sennheiser MKH, I don't remember what it is, MKH 50 or something like that. I don't remember the model number right now, but those are like the microphones in the uh, voice acting world. You don't need them. 90% of the time you don't need them. They might be a good buzzword to hear so that when you say that you have them, people automatically know the quality and the threshold that you're going to provide. Don't get me wrong, that says something, but you don't need them in order to do good work. I worked with Spotify and with Apple and with Budweiser perfectly fine using a, uh, what was it, an Audio-Technica 103, I think. It's like a $99 microphone. I was recording in my closet. Worked perfectly fine. So don't go thinking that you need all of this stuff. Down the line, you can upgrade to it because it's a business decision down the line. Okay, that's going into your equipment. Now, going into the number three, which is your approach to stuff. This is one of the biggest things that it took me such a long time to learn. Voice acting is not about the actual 
reading of a script so much as it is how you approach reading a script. I had a wonderful live session, beautiful, with um, a client. Her name is Kathy. I can't say what it was for yet under NDA, so I can't say what it was for. But this live session, this director was able to bring out beautiful expressiveness in my, in my direction for the read. But I was also, I was able to provide what she was looking for. Because when you're just reading from a script, when you're just reading from copy, it doesn't matter what it is. Let's say I pick up this book. And if I just read, uh, let's do it this way. Free play. Improv improvisation in life and art. Free play. Improvisation in life and art. Well, that's going to have a certain type of vibe and a certain type of meaning. I wanted to leave it uplifting and like have it nice and just warm delivery to you. But if I'm just picking it up, free play, improvisation in life and art. No one wants you to just read something. AI can do that. Text to speech could do that years ago. Nobody want, they want it to have a certain vibe and connect to something. So if I'm an author and I want this read, do I want it to be cold and unapproachable? Do I want it to sound like someone just saying something? Or do I want it to be warm and inviting? And do I want it to sound like, hey, every time you read this book, I want it to sound like you're just sitting down, reading it to your best friend, who's in a troubled spot in his creative life. And this book is the answer, and you are excited to share that with him. So whenever you pick this up, hey, Charles, I, I got this book. It's called um, Free Play, Improvisation in Life and Art. I think you would love this book. Deeper patterns still emerging from unconsciousness. We cannot see our unborn creation. We cannot know it, but we know that it's there and we love it. That love drives us to realize it. It's, it's an approach. And this is something that needs to be learned. This is something that needs to be trained, right? We've gone through our whole lives just reading things for the sake of reading things, which 95% of the time it's perfectly fine. But as a voice actor, it's your job to have an opinion and an approach onto the thing that you're reading. And that brings me to number four. This is one of the most vital things that I love about this profession. And that is the most important thing that you can do is have a stance. Make a choice. That choice doesn't have to be freaking outrageous. It doesn't have to be like, oh, I think that I'm pissed off about reading this book. But it has to be, if I'm auditioning to be the narrator, I need to make a choice as I'm reading this. Am I reading this to my friend? Is my friend across the room? Is he right next to me? Is my friend sad? And he doesn't really want to hear this book, so I'm going to put a little bit of extra oomph in it. Or is he really excited and right there, and I'm just reading straight towards him? I need to make a choice because you're going to have people or auditions where there are a hundred people going after it and everybody is just sitting there and talking and guess what? The casting director is listening to hundreds of these and the thing that sets people apart is when they have a stance. There is no, this is the most important thing, there is no right stance. There is no wrong stance. There's just you making a choice that makes sense to you, right? You need to fully flesh out your reads, not just so that you learn what you're reading, but why is your character saying these things? Or why are you as a narrator saying these things? Are you saying these things because you want to convey a point? Are you saying these things because you want to hide a message? Are you saying these things because you want somebody to be pissed off? Do you want them to be riled up? you want them to be super happy? Why are you saying these things? And I am harboring on this for so much because this is what is going to be the thing that transforms your career. Figuring out your stance on what you're actually reading is going to make the biggest difference. Who are you talking to? Why are you saying it? Like, why are you physically saying these things? As the character or the narrator, what do you want? Do you want someone to download an app? Do you want someone to go to a website? Do you want, like, why are you saying these things? What do you want? And what, at the end of the day, is the message that you want to convey? If I am doing an ad where I'm doing internet security, my message, the thing that I want to convey, is not go to Norton.com. It is safety. It is online protection. It is your identity being saved so that you don't have to worry. You can log on without a single care in the world. If that's something that matters to you, internet security, your identity being safe, you having the right to stay protected online, you should go visit blank, blank, blank. 
having that stance instead of just saying the words is going to be one of the most important things that you can do. Now, for a couple of runner-ups here. There are a couple of traditions that happen when it comes to if you're looking for an agent or if you're connecting with people uh, that are still important, that have not died out in this new digital landscape that we will talk about now. Number one, having a website. I've been back and forth about this. This video is also to update my stances on a couple of different things as well as celebrate the four year anniversary. Um, a website, websites, extremely important, right? That's because you can have a billion social profiles, right? But each social profile says something about you. If you get 99% of all your clients from Fiverr, even if you're charging industry standard rates, when you send that out and the casting director sees Fiverr.com, they're going to have an opinion. They're gonna have an opinion on you working with Fiverr. They're gonna have an opinion on Fiverr as a platform. They're going to have an opinion on whether that's professional enough for you to be on their roster. They're going to have an opinion. And that's perfectly fine. Everybody is entitled to their opinion. But you don't want that opinion to color your chances. A website, a personal website, is something that you control. It's something that you dictate what the messaging is. Do you want it to be more playful? Do you want it to be more professional? Do you want it to be more standard? Do you want it to be more modern? Do you want it to be more minimalist? Do you want it to be more refined? All of these things are under your control with a personal website. Whether you go with Wix, whether you go with Squarespace, whether you go with uh, Bluefin, why it doesn't really matter. But just having your own personal website is important. It is. Along with that, when you register your domain, www.javonhenry.com, also having a personal email. So, sending your stuff from chat at javonhenry.com and actually having the domain. That is also vital. Now, this stuff gets more important as you start to move up the ladder. So, let's say you just want to do, not dubs, um, let's say you just want to do fan projects, fan dubs, right? YouTube videos, YouTube projects, and you want to work with smaller channels, you want to just stay low key, just keep things nice and simple, then none of this will really matter. You can get a domain with Wix and stay with www.wix.com slash javonhenry.com. It doesn't really matter. But once you start wanting to send out your stuff to casting directors on the professional stage, once you start wanting to set up meetings with agents on the professional stage, all of this stuff becomes really important because it shows that you are taking yourself seriously as someone who owns a voice acting business. You are a business owner. Take that to heart. You own a voice acting business, right? And an agent is a member of your team. A manager is a member of your team. All of these players are members of your team that make your business more valuable because they help extend your outreach. So having your own website, having your own email that's branded to your website and having these things in tandem are very important as number one. Number two, as we start to move up this chain as well, it's going to be more important for you to invest in your business. And that means not only on the software side, whether you're gonna start using Source Connect more often, which you will, you'll start using Source Connect. So you need to know how to use it, you need to know how to play around with it. Number two, Zoom. Live direction is the name of the game. It's the name of the game right now for me as well. I had a client who wanted to do a Zoom session for, it was 50 words on a script. Took us maybe 15 minutes to do, but they wanted to do the live session. They paid the live session fee. It's something that people are going to wanna to do. So having your own pro account on Zoom, these things. Being able to pay for your online websites, if that's what you want to do. If you want to be a member of Voices, that costs like $4.99 a year. If you want to be a member of Voice123, they have a $99 tier, they have a $150 tier, they have a $369 tier, $4.99, it goes up and up and up. So figuring out what works for your business. Same with VO Planet. All of these different websites have subscription fees. It's a pay to play. You pay to play. Now, whether or not you put your time in to actually get the return on the investment that you're looking for is up to you. But that's something that you have to decide for your business. On to the big button topic of things that you have to invest in, that's uh, hardware. Now, there are billions of microphones, there are billions of audio interfaces. I'm not here to tell you what to purchase. What I am here to tell you is the stigma against certain names and the champion, uh, the, the, 
uh, pushing forward on certain names, right? If you say I have a Newman TLM-103 or a Newman UA-87, I'm using an Apollo interface, specifically an Apollo Solo or an Apollo Twin, doesn't really matter which one. Uh, and I am recording using Pro Tools or, uh, God, what was the other one? Let's just go with Pro Tools for the sake of the argument. People won't question whether or not you have a professional setup. They just won't. Because all of those things are industry standard names. You just named everything that somebody wants to hear. Boom, bam, bizzle. So they have not a question of what you're actually using. If you say I'm using a Yeti Snowball, it does not matter how good you are. There are going to be some questions that arise. Now, you might be able to satiate these questions, right? You might be able to just send samples and they're like, oh my God, this sounds amazing. I'm, I'm, this is sick. Yeah, heck yeah. Let's get you on board. But you will have to do work in order to satiate those questions. So gear matters, but not necessarily for the reason why a lot of people think that it matters. I'm an audio engineer by trade. Been doing this since college, baby. Been doing this for about eight years. Let me tell you, microphones generally all sound perfectly fine. Once you get above like, I'd say like $200, they all sound, all sound pretty damn good. And that's just because the technology has been around for years. So it's just, it is what it is. But brand names do mean something. Brand names do mean something. So investing in your business, that's honorable mention number two. Last but not least, the last honorable mention before we get out of here is investing in yourself. Now that shouldn't have been an honorable mention. That should have been just right up at the top because we did talk about this a little bit, but I'm going to bring it back because it's so important. Read, watch source material from the projects that you want to be a part of. If you want to be a video game actor, for God's sake, Please, in some capacity, play, watch, or learn from video game dialogue. You can't play video game dialogue. Play video games. But you get what I mean. You need to be consuming the media that you want to be a part of. If I wanted to be a classical clarinetist, which I will be still one day. I've been trained for 16 years on clarinet, not giving that up. I need to listen to what a standard classical clarinetist sounds like so that when I go in to do this... I would have a better understanding and approach to how to physically play and perform. It's just what it is. If you want to work in commercials, listen to commercials. If you want to work in video games, play video games. If you want to work in anime dubbing, watch anime. Because all of these things have a different approach. Whether it be very subdued and laid back, whether it be very bombastic and loud, whether you want to go on radio, you got 30 seconds to capture someone's attention and make a point. You are usually bombastic. You are usually in, in somebody's face. You, you're not trying to be annoying about it, but you get the point. Things are different sounding in one land of media versus the other, and you need to know what those differences are so that you can best approach those medias. So, take classes. Learn from people who have been doing this for a long time. There is no shame in learning from people. And by far, the most important for me that I've been learning recently, know how to price your services, right? Know when something is not okay. In perpetuity, for a commercial project that can be leveraged as paid media for the rest of eternity, 99.99% of the time is not cool. It's just, it is what it is, right? You need to understand what you should be charging. You need to understand what rates are acceptable in our industry so that you are not bringing down the rate of acceptability for everyone else. Because if everybody goes and starts charging $10 for a gig, there are going to be people who still are willing to spend 1000 thousand, two thousand, three thousand $2,000, $4,000, depending on the job. But it's going to make the new people who get in and who have a budget and who don't understand what it typically costs, expect it to cost this and have a lot of hesitation or questions when they come into contact with a rate that is above that. And let me tell you, this is an industry where when you train, when you know what you're doing, when you get proper course when you get a big enough portfolio and a name behind you this is a lucrative industry there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with saying that but i'll be damned if i'm going to do a gig that is worldwide showing in perpetuity no especially a lot of them want to pay like a hundred dollars no that's not an industry rate that's not a livable rate 
And I'm not in the business of doing 700 gigs in one month just to make minimum wage. That's not how this industry works. So go to GVAA Rate Guide or Google the GVAA Rate Guide and they will list out the professional rates that are expected in this industry. Learn how to educate your clients to show them what rates are expected and what they can get commiserate with that rate, with a professional rate. And doesn't matter if this is day one for you. If you've got the training, you've got the know-how, you've got the equipment, even if this is day one, you can charge professional rates. Because, buddy, you are a professional. There are two camps in this realm. One camp says, I can't charge professional rates because I don't have a portfolio, so I will charge under professional rates until I build a portfolio and then slowly start to ramp up. And then there's the other camp that I went with. I will make my own samples for no one for free. That way I can build a sample portfolio and then I can flood my profiles with samples of my own work and then we can judge the quality off of the basis of that. And then I can start to get clients from there. And that's how I did my work for a very, very long time. Slower, yes, but both work perfectly fine. That's it. That's all I got for you. This is four years of being a voice actor. Holy hell, man. Yeah. It's been a wild ride. Uh, it's been great getting to build this channel with you guys. This was just really just a chat. I'm glad that you guys were able to sit down. Uh, thank you guys for being along on this journey. I cannot thank you guys enough. This has been absolutely incredible to see this community grow, to see the people who are here. And I just want to take a second and just thank you all, truly, from the bottom of my heart. I hope that I am here to give you the tools that I wish that I had, and that I probably could have found somewhere. I'm happy that you're finding it through me. Any questions, comments, or concerns, you know what to do. Just leave a comment down below or reach out to me. I am free and available and I love chatting with you guys. And catch you guys in the next video.